Hey, good morning. Welcome back. We are at 1 Samuel 17, verses 4 to 11 now. Hey, we're going to introduce Goliath. Here he is. And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of his coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. And he had bronze armor on his legs and a bronze javelin between his shoulders. Now the staff on his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels, and a shield-bearer went before him. Then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and you the servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves, and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. So when you trust in human flesh, when you trust in the arm of flesh, what, what do you have to rely on after that? Well, Saul, the tallest guy in Israel, he's afraid of Goliath. So let's think a little bit about Goliath here. Here he is. He's a champion. He's bigger than anyone else. There's apparently some kind of genetic abnormalities in some of the Philistines. There's some that have six fingers and some are very tall. And, uh, you know, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Well, I'm getting ahead of the story. But this guy is big. And if we translate all these cubits and uh, all that into contemporary uh, measures, we won't take the time to do that here. You can look that up somewhere. Anyway, this guy is heavily armored, very heavily armored. He is big. He is really big. And everybody is running from him. Even Saul would be looking up to this guy, okay? So Saul is one shoulder, head and shoulder above everybody else in Israel. So everybody's running away from this guy. And notice, however, you know, so we've got the physical description. You can look at that again. But notice what he says. That's kind of the key business here. Why have you come out to line up for battle? You know, let's just get a champion. Let's just have that guy come out and then I'll come out and we'll just solve it between the two of us. By the way, that's what he's going to get. But here he's he's challenging the Hebrews and he's mocking them. Just find one guy that can, can potentially take me on. That's what he's asking for. Uh, and he's going to get more than he bargained for. But, but at the moment, the champion of God is not there yet. And so Saul, who's the king, that remember, we want a king to fight our battles for us. That was the argument for getting him to be the king. Saul isn't rushing out there to fight this guy. The interesting business comes at verse 10, really, though. The Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. So he defies the armies of Israel. He defies the armies of God's people. And so this is how he's presenting himself. I am defiant. Come and get me. And nobody really wants to do that. There he is, the champion, a person with force, a champion for the Philistines. What's going to happen? This isn't going according to their plan. The Philistines are not supposed to come up with somebody who's so big and so dangerous. Uh, that That's sort of more than the Hebrews have bargained for. If only they were following God's path. As for us, we're going to find giants. We're going to find giants that will come out and stand in our way and mock us and laugh at us and make us feel hopeless. Here we have the setting with Goliath before us. And I wouldn't really want to be in Saul's shoes either, would you? So we'll leave it there and let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, sometimes there are giants in our pathway and we don't know what to do. Here, Saul and the Hebrews are confronted with a giant, one who's mocking the armies of Israel, and they, they don't know what to do. We can trust in you. You will provide what is needed, but we must be careful to walk in your ways and seek your guidance. You will be our leader, and you will present to us those leaders that are needed. Thank you for hearing our prayer today. In Jesus' name, amen. What's going to happen with Goliath? Well, I think we all know the story, but tomorrow morning, I'll pick it right up where we left off. In the meantime, God be with you and every giant that you face.